Hi, here's part three of me and comedian Mark Lundholm, who does a lot of work with jails and prisons. He's been locked up himself. A couple clips of his comedy app. Then our, the last part of our interview, and he's got a special message at the end of the interview. Thanks for watching, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mark Lundholm. Thank you very much. Started doing comedy in jails, drug rehabs, halfway houses, and other places I've lived. I attended San Jose State University, where I was a business major with a minor in controlled substances. I think if there are pearly gates up there in heaven when you get there, I think they got razor wire all over the top. Because I still don't pay attention. I'll be having sex. Just hey, a nickel. <laughs> That's shiny. Look at that. You'll be back? Oh, you'd be mad. Oh, if that was you? Because you didn't get the nickel? <laughs> I still go back and perform at jails or prisons every year. I was at Indiana State yesterday. And I've learned how to entertain liars and cheats and criminals. I, I treat them like you. I will tell them the truth even if it is unpopular. One of the things I'll always say to that prison audience is, some of you became criminals because life's not fair. They go, yeah. <laughs> some of you had horrible childhoods. Your parents were unavailable or just flat disappeared because life's not fair. Yeah. Because life's not fair, some of you are in here right now doing time for a crime that wasn't even yours. Oh yeah! <laughs> they like that one a lot. <laughs> and then I'll ask them this, well, what if they locked you up for every crime you really did do. When would you get out? Aren't you kind of glad life's not fair? <laughs> they don't like that one quite as much, no. First thought wrong, 13 years old, I'm in front of the judge. I pleaded maybe. <laughs> he didn't think it was funny at all. Normal people have a different vocabulary than the rest of us. Normal people invented words like valor and honor. Hope. The rest of us, we designed words like allegedly. <laughs> Probable cause. And the four most beautiful words in the English language, sentences to run concurrent. <laughs> My wife is an afflicted, convicted lady. She actually did more jail time than I did, so she has seniority at home. But normal people don't laugh right there at all. <laughs> Well, don't the wives always have seniority? Yeah, especially in the penal system, but. When possible, make an illegal U-turn, Mark, in your mental state, recalculate it. No, illegal U-turn, you don't have time for normal legal. In fact, criminal, remember, criminal doesn't mean bad, criminal means caught. <laughs> normal people don't watch that show Cops and go, <laughs> I did that too, right there. That... Run, my brother, whoa! Let's go, you can, I'm rooting for the naked guy. Normal people go, where are that fella's pants right there? Dude? Instead of all those yak yak wah wah, she she la la foo foo voices that say, do this, do that, do this, do that, don't get caught. This over here says, if you do this, you won't get caught. You can't get caught. Shortcut. If you got to keep it a secret, don't do it. It'll change your whole life. Yeah. See, I'm still peeing in a cup. I got about a year left to peeing in a cup. I got three years of probation. When you get out of the federal system, they put you on probation. One little, one little dirty test, a shot of Jack Daniels puts me right back. With the feds, they don't play. They don't give the second chances. Uh, they, they send you right back. I've seen it too many times. And, uh, you know, so, uh, but I'm doing the right thing. You know, and I, I, I stayed sober the whole time. You know, I stayed clean. In prison the whole time. Started AA meetings. I don't know if you saw that video, but uh, there was no AA meetings at my prison, and and there is now. And it's thanks to H and I and and uh, you know people that hope I didn't do it alone. So well, we we don't do it alone. Alone is is the unsafest neighborhood I ever stroll through. You know, alone means I'm listening to the last guy who got me loaded. He 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 was the one I took a charge for. He didn't do time. I did. So uh, I, if I'm listening to me, that's bad advice. Most of the time. The other thing is, um, if, if the H and I and the AA and the NA and the GA and the OA and all the A's, right? 
I, I speak I speak a bunch of different languages. Uh, um, That's NEA right. Is, NEA is an in-law to an outlaw. NEA is an in-law to an outlaw. And, and the outlaws are, are, are the ones who can help the other outlaws because we speak a familiar language. We have the same frame of reference, right? Um, I'd much rather do something exciting and dramatic and chaotic. I mean, uh, I'm attracted to significant others who are borderline personality, guns in a glove box, meds on the front seat, ain't got her name on them, um, sex on the first date in the garage at her mom's house. You know what I mean? It, it, this, is, this is crazy stuff. A uh, uh, toxic behavior. It's that's a, that's exciting till Wednesday. That's exciting till I'm caught. Criminal doesn't mean bad. Criminal means caught. We know that. But if I want to do something different, I got to get different instruction. So I pee in a cup sometimes now just to watch it and and throw it away. <laughs> I mean, must be nice, you know. Just just to say, <laughs> I don't care. Hey. Should we test this, Mark? Uh, no, you don't need to because I'm clean. But the other thing is, I ain't handing that cup to nobody. I don't put a yeah. lid on it. I don't measure how much is in it. Pee in a cup, throw it away. You know, yeah. I've peed in a lot of cups clean. <laughs> but but and, and right now, <laughs> right now, um, I, I'm I'm thinking about how when we're out, when we're out, uh, we pretend we're not scared. We pretend this is all funny. There's a lot of pretend you know, inside and outside. I don't speak pretend anymore, anymore. It's been years and years and years. I know that language, but I don't want to speak it fluently. I want to speak authentic. I want to speak thorough. I want to speak genuine. I want to speak honest because I don't have to apologize for any of those languages. And the more languages you speak, the more people you can talk to. Like I'm talking to guys today who, who I know. You know, I, I know, I know when you're scared, you puff up. I, I know when I know you're scared. When you're scared. I know when you're scared that you, you, you retreat and, and PC up somewhere and, and hope nobody sees. But right foot, left foot, breathe is the best way to do this with somebody's help. Get Sean's help. Get my help. Uh, get somebody's help who's, who's, who's stayed out a while because uh, anybody can go back. Anybody. You know, the recidivism rate in the United States is it, 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 it's astronomically hot. And the substance abuse or uh, if you're panty waste vanilla worried about words uh, in the mental health industry, uh, a substance user. You can't say abuse in the mental health industry because people take it personally. They get their they get their feelings hurt. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Offended. We, yeah. We gotta we gotta we gotta change the language so we don't hurt a criminal's feelings. We don't <laughs> hurt an addict's feelings. Heaven forbid somebody else should hurt my feelings. Here's a joke right in the show. OK, this is a this is about self-esteem, Sean. You ever have such low self-esteem? I mean, low that you're making love to somebody and you look at them and you think, I can't trust them. Look at the choice they just made. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I have. Yeah. And, and, and in the big picture, in the big picture, uh, uh, romanticism aside, I'm not going to tell you who I am because now two of us will hate me and disrespect me. <laughs> it's it, it's it's a it's a. It's a self, it's a self-taught, self-caught criminal behavior. Now, in this instance, I'm not teaching myself. I'm doing the work, but I'm using your help. I'm using other guys' help. My first sponsor was a badass street guy from Brooklyn. He took no crap from nobody, but he did a lot of time. And he's been clean for 30 plus years. I think it's 38. I've been clean 32 years. He's been clean 38 years. And both of us still talk to each other. He's not a sponsor of mine anymore. We don't live close enough to hang. But I've replaced that particular relationship over and over and over with somebody who was just as strong, just as honest, just as tall. You know, he stood tall. He was five foot five. And he was the tallest man in the room when I met him. Badass. Wow. He, badass. One of those guys who, who he, he had no, no time to mess around. He just said, listen, my name's Freeman. I'm a Brooklyn street thug. And if you're not serious about your recovery, don't look at me while I'm talking to you tonight. That's how he opened a share. Now, that's a punch in the face for some people. Yeah. For me, for me, it was a pat on the head. Dude, I understand, little man. I mean, I'm six feet tall. He's five foot five. 
he he was bigger, broader, taller, stronger than anybody in that room because of his truth. And truth will make you tall. Secrets make you small. So there's all kinds of these little sayings and shortcuts that I got stuck in my pocket. But I didn't have them my first day out. I didn't have my first breath uh, outside the wire. I got them one foot, one foot, breathe. Left foot, right foot, breathe. Right foot, left foot, breathe. I got them from not puffing up my chest, but opening up my heart. And that's all we're asking these guys to do or not or not. If you do what we do, you'll have what we have. If you do what you always do, you're going to go where you are today. And I don't know that that's where you really want to be, tough guy. As I drink out of my coffee cup with a little birdie on the handle. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, yeah. do, you, do you have some advice for, I got a bunch of guys that are coming up on their sentencing day. You know, they're out on a bond now. And I, I get calls and questions, all this. And I've, you know, told them my share. But maybe from your perspective, there, there's this day when you get sentenced and the judge finally gets to hear from you. You know, and I tell them not to make a speech and speak from your heart and all that. But what advice do you have to tell them? This is the one time the judge is actually going to listen to you before before he decides how much time you get. Okay, um, uh, two things, and and um, let me let me say this like this. Uh, you're going to edit this down. So if if I no, I'm not. I don't edit. I don't edit these. I just let them run. I don't. I don't bother with that. <laughs> no, I don't. I, I keep it real. I keep it real. I, I really do. I, listen, I don't. Listen, listen, don't, don't, don't give me that crap. Uh, listen, editing don't mean not making it real. <laughs> editing makes it real shorter, man. I mean, how many times have you used too many words, Sean? A lot. <laughs> yeah. So here's what I'm going to tell you. You ask me a question, I'm going to get to the answer. That's hilarious. I keep it real. I, I keep it real long. I keep it real long winded. I keep I, it. No, I, give okay. the, I give them the human part of it. Sometimes people want to see the mistakes. Sometimes you know? the human part is shut the fuck up, man. <laughs> right. so, so how about this? How about this? Let's rewind. Let's go back. Let's All go right. back. <laughs> let's go this, back to the let's go this, back to the pre-sentencing here. Okay. okay. So 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 the if you keep it shorter, people can retain more. Um, and the reason I say that is the three B's. It's like any time you share. This is the answer to your question about now that you have the judge's ears, he or she is going to listen. You keep it super simple. The three B's. Be honest. Be brief. Be seated. Be honest. Be brief. Be seated. Choose your words carefully. I'm going to do it right now. Three word sentences. Keep it brief. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. I want change. Willing to change. Please help me and sit the fuck down. If you said that, the, 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 the attention span in the United States right now, this is documented. This isn't Mark's opinion. The attention span right now in the United States is six seconds. TikTok, uh, you want to hear a great joke? Yeah. <laughs> okay, social media, right? Uh, this this uh, social media. I love the social media addictions, you know, fake book, boob tube, infant gram, snatch chat, dick talk. <laughs> I can do that one on the radio, on, yeah. on public radio, right? Because they they all have words that mean other things besides the words I just said. Sure. But keep it super simple. Keep it brief. If you have to use more than six or seven or nine words to state your case, you, you're already overselling it. You ever go into a, go into a situation with a bag of dope or a real good gun? You don't tell people how good it is. You know, you, you just you don't have to. <clears throat> yeah. Your 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 intentions are to. Uh, plead your case. Hey, I really want to change. I want change. Please help me. Uh, I'm so tired. I want different. I mean, if, if you keep it brief, they'll keep paying attention. As soon as we wander off into, I'm going to say every word that comes out of my head without a filter, 
they've how many times do you think they've they've heard that sentence i mean seriously uh joke in the show just for normal people maybe watching normal people on the fringe somewhere um you know how you know the difference between normal and the rest of us you know the the, the normal and the rest of us the rest of us you know locked up locked in locked down normal people you ask them uh man isn't that a long sentence they think words <laughs> <laughs> So I, yeah. I, would, I would say, and, and I'm not sure that that's advice, but I would say to somebody, be honest, be brief, be seated. That goes for when you get out too, at a meeting, um, uh, uh, it, with, a, with a girlfriend, boyfriend, significant other, partner, whatever you want to get. I don't care where people point their privates. I don't, I don't care about pronouns as much as I do heart. You know, somebody's heart aimed at another person. I understand the draw, but keep it simple. Keep it brief. You know, too many words. My ex-wife, the plaintiff, um, she, uh, she, that's the most expensive joke of the day, right? Like the there. plaintiff. Yeah. 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 That one, that one cost me nine grand a month, Sean. Wow. So, so, uh, now a lot of brothers listening going, damn, I thought I had it bad. Right. Or <laughs> if I do that in a women's penitentiary, they go, shoot, I, I fucked the wrong baby daddy. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, uh, what, what I get to do now is, is, is uh, shorten the information so that the retention is more. We, we, yeah. Shakespeare said, uh, brevity is the soul of wit. If you keep it narrow and focus, it's easier to stay focused. So super simple. My ex-wife, Julie, she got 25 years clean. She did more time than I did. Oh. She did more time than I did. At home, she had seniority when we were married. <laughs> she, was, she had the juice card because she's done more time than I did. Uh, that was humbling, but she would tell me all the time, Mark, too many words, Mark, too many words. If you use up all the words in a conversation, you ain't left me none. And that was really sound advice. So to every brother who's getting out, to every mother who's getting out, to every sister who's getting out, use fewer words and bigger truth. Use fewer words and listen. Thinking ain't listening. Talking ain't listening. Listening is listening. And if you listen, you're going to learn new ways different. Different precedes better. You want to do it better out there? Anger? Better out there? Trauma survivor? Better out there? Challenge? Better out there? Panic? You want to do better? You got to do it different. Sean and I, people like us, will show you what different taste sounds looks like. Not because we're smart. Are you smart, Sean? Well... Oh. See, I can't even, yeah, yeah. am I, I smart? I, 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 I thought I was until I went to prison, so, you know. Well, see, that, that's where smart gets you. I'm so smart, I can't learn. Here's what I'll tell you. I, it's not that I'm smart. It's just that I, I've, I've been sober, clean, out of, out of jail long enough to know shortcuts for the next people who don't know the shortcuts yet. Listen, if you want to drive from, let's say, let's make this uh, uh, international here. If you want to drive from Colombia up to Mexico City, you know you can, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah you can go. You can yeah, drive. Yeah. But would, would you go through Antarctica first? <laughs> Depends how good the drugs are, but probably not. Yeah, yeah. See, that, that's what we would think. That's what we yeah. would think. Or, but it would take you longer. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. If, you really, if you really want to go from here to Hero, why are you taking so long? Because you won't ask directions or you think you know the way even though you ain't never made that trip that's not smart that's intelligence aimed in the wrong direction i would much rather be experienced i would much rather be wise you know there's an old timer there's an old salt in san quentin who i see at least once a year he's never getting out never getting out huh never he's never getting out he's alive but in q in q They've got a really, uh, they were the first, I know they were the first prison in California to do this, but they, they have a, 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 an education system where the lifers have a chance to get a credential as a counselor, uh, a drug and alcohol counselor, and then they can school the other brothers in there. And a lot of, they've had probably, I, I'm guessing, I, I, I can't tell you the exact date, but they've probably had 10 or 11 years worth of graduating classes now. Wow. The lifers in there get to, to teach the other lifers 
how to teach the other guys how not to use or abuse chemical. They get to teach them how to use hopeful, spiritual, truthful, because chemical takes the place of all those hopeful, spiritual, truthful. Chemical replaces all that stuff. And then we end up locked up, locked in, locked down and wonder why. But in Q, there's a guy, uh, there's a guy, um, he's never getting out, but he is as old and wise as anybody I've ever met. Now he's never getting out uh, uh, of doing yard time. He's never getting off the block, but he can tell people in there, hey, you don't want to live here the rest of your life. Spend the rest of your time changing your mind. Because you're going to do one of two things when you get out, brother. You're going to change your behavior or you're going to change your release date. Yeah. One of those is going to change this. Behavior. There you go. You yeah. want to pick up a new number? Don't change your behavior. You change your behavior, you ain't going to pick up a new number. Listen, it's as simple as that. It's ABC123 kindergarten. You know, put your thumb in your mouth, open your ears, and we'll help you. Yeah. I, I, there's let, a, that that let, sounds let me, easy, doesn't it? Sounds easy. But it's easier, said than, it's easier said than done. But, I mean, uh, I'm doing it one day at a time. You know, I, I've been out going on two years now, and I don't plan on going back. But I never know. I never know from day to day. So I got to keep doing what I did, you know? Well, let me ask you, let me ask you a question. And not to challenge you, because, uh, you know, I don't want to throw down and, and strap up with phone books and all that other crap we used to use. And when I did time, they, they, you could you could put... You, we, we, you could protect yourself with a vest that you made out of thick, thick. Paper. Oh yeah. Right. So they, when they shake you, it does. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, now you can sue somebody, <laughs> but, but, um, and this is, this is the eighties. You know, I, I, I did most of my time in crime in the eighties. Right. Uh, I got clean in 88, but uh, other before that, most of the eighties, I either lived under a bridge or, or somebody stub, you know, yeah so i was in but, the tenderloin but, yeah i know that's before that's before they had tents you know that's now the homeless people they they've they've got tents i'm jealous but in my day if you had a shopping cart you were you were like you know you were a king you know but now boy it's homeless yeah. i mean those are the rich homeless in my in my mind they got well tents. I, had, I, had a, <laughs> I had a lady i had a lady in texas i was doing an interview on tv um i'm not hard to find out there social media or whatever right but I've been blessed with uh, some attention because I'm funny, right? Uh, and I'm funny because I'm clean and I'm clean because I got help. So, so uh, the, the, the lady, uh, the little normie, little normie lady, you know, she never, she never dated a felon. She never had a, a, a late night sneaky uncle stuff at home. She didn't have bad dad, crappy mom, addicted parents. She was, she was normal, straight laced. And she said, Ooh, Ooh, I read your, I read your biography. Ooh, you were homeless. I said, yeah. She goes, she goes, what'd you do with all your stuff? <laughs> I said, uh, uh, do you know what the word homeless means? She goes, oh, 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 did you have like a storage locker? And I said, no, that, that would have been a really good home. And yeah. Said, that would, yeah. But, but then she said, then she said, and, and was it heroin? Was it heroin? I said, it was everything really. I, I mean, uh, back in the day it was, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, tall chicken, short bird. It was uh, MD. It was Ripple. It was, uh, you know, some kind of a fine wine, which was like 69 cents to, to just stop the, the DTs in the morning. Yeah. Wild Iris go, Rose, Thunderbird, I, all that. Yeah. yeah, then I go get my skag, right? But she said, was it the heroin? I said, well, it heroin didn't help. She goes, well, heroin's terrible, isn't it? I go, yeah, when you run out. <laughs> when you run out heroin is all of a sudden terrible right so so all that stuff that you and i laugh at because we're outlaws and we're talking to in-laws who are uh maybe on the fringe of their collateral damage or they want to know things they can't understand the next thing i'm going to say to you the next thing i'm going to say to you is when you say uh I, i've been out for two years but i don't know today i don't know today here's what will change for you sean at some point, you will know you're not going back. You will absolutely know you're not going back. There's no question. There's no question in my mind today. I'm not going back to jail. See, I know today I'm not going back. Today I know. 
Today, nothing's going to stop. Today, and, and that's because that's because today I will not use, abuse, lose, and repeat the four stages of uh, uh, criminal cancer that we have. Use it, right. abuse, lose it, and repeat. Use it, abuse, lose, and repeat. Trust, truth, money, IQ. Use, abuse, lose, and repeat. We got a four stage cancer that says I can't do anything but go back. Today, I know. I know. I'm going to have, uh, uh, here's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to have lunch with my brother. He's 11 months younger than me. He's got three years clean and he's about as simple as they get, but he's, he's 61 years old. He's 61. I'm 62. He's yeah. 61. He's 61 years old and he's got three whole years. Well, it's never too late. Yeah. I'm 56. So, you know, I've never, yeah. I've never met that person who was, uh, uh, too young, too old, too too bought, too sold, too hot, too cold. I never met that person who couldn't take advantage of their own gifts. But sometimes we don't know what to do with a tool. You know, a scalpel. A scalpel is a great tool if you're a surgeon. In my hands, I'm just a slasher. So I'm not using a scalpel. Intelligence is a scalpel. Energy is a scalpel. Strength is a scalpel. Are you going to be a slash, slasher or a surgeon? God made no junk. So everybody who's locked up listening to this, what are you doing with all your assets and tools? Criminal, what are you doing? I ain't mad at you. This is passion. What are you doing with the tools God gave you? God made no junk. The universe didn't make a mistake. There's nothing wrong with you. But every time I use a tool as a weapon, somebody suffers. Every time I use a tool as an asset or a gift, the universe benefits. Get out your own way. And now I say that to you because somebody said that to me. Freeman would tell me all the time, get your head out of your ass. I'd say, hey, man, I, get, I got my heart broken. Get your head out of your ass. Now, I, I don't talk to my sponsees like that. I don't talk to my 14-year-old son like that. I tell him, listen, that must hurt. He's got skills, man. He's 14. He's never been locked up, but he knows how to stay out. Now, that's, stay out. that's a good thing to learn as a teenager. Did you hear that when you were a teenager? No. You're a good I, person. No, I, I was. I heard I was worthless. I'm no son of yours. I'll, I'll never mount to nothing. And you know, I, I had a. And that's, I had a. I had a violent, drunk father. So you know. Okay, so his dad told his dad. His dad told his dad. His dad right. told his dad. I'm gonna be like you. Yeah. I'm gonna tell my son. Listen, you be like you. I love you. I'll support you. I trust you. That must hurt a lot. Pain, yeah, pain. I tell him two things, and I don't know. I, I don't know how far this is gonna go. Uh, is this all PG here, Sean? No, it's whatever rating you want to put on. Well, yeah. listen, without being uh, 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 salacious here, I don't want to. I, I don't want to have this shut down at some institution because I said the wrong word. Um, it, that's not a fear; it's out of respect. But I tell my son all the time, and this is for every mother and brother on this call. You tell your sons when they're little. This is, and tell me this doesn't hit you right in the gut, right? I tell my son three words a lot when it comes to his care, right? Pussy can wait. If you knew that when you were a younger male, how far would you have gotten as you're in your own development? Yeah, right. Now I see your point. Yeah. I'm not going to say it again because I think you heard me. Yeah. I, yeah. I tell him that in a phrase. Now, my daughter, who I raised, I, she's 32. Um, she's she, that's a different care package there i got three kids from three different moms sean i used to do a lot of poking locals when i was touring right so so i got a i got a 32 year old i got a 22 year old and a 14 year old every 10 years i used to make a kid you know what i mean i'm, <laughs> I'm about due this weekend sean i'm about due this weekend maybe i will go to an na meeting in person right so so um and, and all that kidding aside, what I get to tell my son is what I didn't know from my dad. My dad was that guy. My dad was a fully fueled, racist, alcoholic punisher. He just hid it very well. He was a lead tenor in the choir in the Catholic church. The, 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 the population at church, they adored my dad. At home, we were absolutely in panic. We were paralyzed by fear. And, and mom hid in the medicine cabinet. I yeah. hid where I could, but I'm the oldest. So guess what I get to do? I'm the oldest of five kids. I have to protect four kids that I didn't make, that I didn't sign up to care for. And I'm a five-year-old boy. 
So I don't know that that is any kind of story somebody out there can relate to, but it sure sent me a lot of directions that were false. I got to be tough at five. I got to be strong and knowledgeable at seven. I got to be a predator at, at nine years old to go hunt down the one who's hunting me. I, I, all that stuff that doesn't work, instead of being able to say like my kid can say to me, My boy can say to me, dad, you hurt my feelings. I'm so mad because I'm hurt. I can't choose the right words. Dad, will you help me with my words? He's been doing that since he was five or six years old because him, he, he has two parents. His mother's a goddess and his father is a, is a rock star father. I'm not saying that because I'm patting myself on the back. There's no uh, puffing out my chest, but I learned from other men how to speak to young men, especially the one I want to raise. My ex-wife, you know. No, that, that's beautiful, Mark. I w we weren't allowed to have feelings in my family, so that, that's beautiful that, well, that, we that, <laughs> that, 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 you, that, that you've evolved where your well, son can actually family, have feelings. You know, that's In my family, we had a couple feelings. We had, we had, we had uh, uh, rage and, and, and we had fake. Yeah. You fake well, the feelings other than rage. Rage, right. you just, you just verbally vomit on somebody. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to splash my trash on you. Rage. We spoke rage and fake. Uh, sad, we had to fake it. You know, fear, we had to fake it. Uh, uh, joy, we faked that. You know, we faked, uh, we faked accomplishment. We faked satisfied. We faked. Um, of compassion we, we we spoke rage and fake and and those two languages i mean uh they they don't work i, I know that uh, uh shortcut shortcut when i say shortcuts I, I i really want six seconds of your time shortcut rage is an overdose of passion shortcut passion to change is anger who had the who had the, the better handle on anger who, I'm going to ask you, Sean, and every other brother or sister listen to this. Who handled anger better? Charles Manson, Adolf Hitler, or Martin Luther King? Because those were three angry motherfuckers. I would guess Charles Manson. <laughs> he handled anger better he, he didn't than take Martin Luther King? Well, he didn't take accountability for any of his actions. You know? You're going to say, you're going to say that's, that's better <laughs> than Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King took the anger which is god made no junk anger anger is a gift from god martin luther king took the anger he had he was seething about the unfairness the, the absolute horror that somebody had to go through because of what they were born right he took that and made it a movement he made it a passion he made it a, a congregation he made he made he, he so people could tell the truth out there the yeah. truth got out there uh, uh, Manson, well, Hitler. Manson had a movement too. It just wasn't that popular. <laughs> Dude, how the fuck did you get this show? <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm just they playing. let you drive a car? I'm just playing. <laughs> you wanna? He wanna ride? He wanna ride a bike the rest of your life? <laughs> All right. So, so listen. A lot of us, a lot of us, made poor choices with great in, intent. You know, powerful intent. Uh, anger becomes passionate change. Sad is a gift. It becomes empathetic and connected to. Um, when you saw me tear up there earlier because of a question I chose not to tear up about, I mean, that, that I chose to let show, was there empathy there? For, yes. for, and, and that happens with us. When we tell the truth, <laughs> other people can connect to us because of the feeling we have. Feelings aren't facts. Feeling don't change the truth. How you feel about the truth ain't going to change the truth. You might not like gravity because you're falling, but guess where you're going to end up, right? <laughs> it's just yeah. feelings aren't facts. And all this stuff I didn't know when I got out. When I got out, the first, the first day, you know what I did, Sean? First day I got out? The first day I got out and knew I was going to stay out. You know what I did? What would you do? I bought two-ply toilet paper. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I, I bought two-ply toilet paper and... I went and got the crappiest, greasiest hamburger I could get. Yeah, that's what I, I did. That I, I did. Yeah. It was it was maybe um, there was this place. There was this place back in the day. Um, um, 
that, that had these, these uh, burgers. It, this was in San Leandro, California. Uh, there was this place that has, has, it had these burgers that you could get two or three patties, right? And, and I, I, I got the biggest, greasiest burger I could have. And back then, I didn't know how to use napkins or all that stuff. I mean, it was, you know, yeah. you just do that. Hey, I was out four years before I quit blowing my nose on my pillowcase, which I was just going to sleep on that night. Change didn't come quickly for Mark Lundholm. But there were things I needed to do out there that I'd never done before. Tell the truth without witnesses. Um, show up when I said I would. Uh, go back and look somebody in the eye and say, listen, I, the proper amends I need to make here isn't all financial. I need to tell you, I'm sorry for this. How can I change what happened for the better? How can I use this to, to make amends here? How, what can I do to make up for that? And a lot of times people don't want to listen. Or that I'm already crossed off a list they had for people to talk to. Uh, I get that. But when you get out and you want to stay out, you better talk to somebody who knows how to make that trip from used to be locked up to never going back. It's a short trip. Yeah. But our behavior changes or our release date changes. Um, I was wondering, so, you know, when, when, when we get locked up, especially like me, we hurt the families that we leave behind, the friends, the employers, everybody that we we kind of leave a mess behind us and we go off to prison. And, you know, uh, I was wondering if you could speak to the families of inmates that are, while the inmates locked up, you know, the families go through a, a, a lot. They're getting shame from their friends and their family and their neighbors and where they go to work and the kids, your kids are being picked on at school because, you know, your father's in prison and can you can you speak to the families out there? Let me talk to the inmates first. What you do today is a ripple in the pond. There's collateral damage. Every time I went off as a hand grenade, you know who got hurt the worst? Everybody closest to the grenade. So... The next time, here's what I want to do with that. I'm not trying to shame you, right? Freedom starts with forgiveness. But the next time you want to get into that car, you know you shouldn't get into. Take that call you know you shouldn't pick up on. Meet that brother or sister out there that's, you know, walking the hard way instead of rocking the, the, the simple way. Next time you want, have those thoughts. Have those thoughts about the kids at school taking crap. Have those thoughts about the, the, the woman who did stay uh, uh, faithful or the man who did stay productive in your life uh, uh, the, the the mama who's crying at night because she raised somebody she don't recognize them if you have those thoughts prior to the act you're going to make you don't make that act so that's what i want to do with that as far as the families go same solution sean we hook up with people who know our story speak our language have our truth and when families survive out there it's because they change their behavior Dude, when you get out, lady, when you get out, if your family hasn't drawn a different line or boundary, you ain't staying out. And they're going to let you back in. Because when you give tough love to somebody, tough love's a, a 1979, 80s phrase, tough love. You know what tough love really means, Sean? Tough love is, it, it, it's difficult for the people who give it. Tough love don't mean I'm going to be tough on you and love you at the same time. Tough love means it's tough for me to love you like this, but back the fuck up, do your part, or you don't get a key to the house. You don't get to come here and visit these people. You don't get to be on our block because you haven't changed your patterns. You don't get to change the company you keep. You know the company you're keeping right now, brothers? Look around the room or the cell or the pod you're in. Look around the, the cafeteria or the yard you're in. That's the company you're keeping right now. You want to keep different company, you got to make different changes. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm saying you can. And the families out there who are struggling because they're out there and you're in there, they need help from people who are out there with somebody in there. We speak similar languages. I don't care about color, belt size, birthday, biblical preference. I don't care what, what heritage you got. Uh, I don't care who you want to make love to or... or or uh, what you can do for a living. Because criminality means I got caught. And the families of the people who got caught, 
they're doing time and they're not locked up. They're locked up. And it's really tough to live locked up. So the family's got to talk to other families. There's all kinds of organizations out there, Sean. You know it and I know it. I got a lady one. coming on tomorrow from uh, Wings for Life that helps families and she's networking. There's, there's places, together. there's places, there's places that are 12 step related. There's a place yeah. in, in San Jose called Friends Outside. Friends I, Outside. I remember them when I, I did time at Elmwood, you know. Yeah, Friends. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> You've been there too, yeah. aren't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo! Elmwood. Elmwood. Uh, yeah. Elmwood, no good. So, so friends outside, there's lots of organizations like that that know what they're doing. Um, uh, service League, in, Service League, that's another one. There are places where you can donate um, uh, uh, or, or, or receive uh, uh, clothing, uh, uh, assistance, information, information. Um, it's just like prison. Um, the, the most important thing in there is information about being in there or people in there or how to get out of there or outside there. Information will, will take you a lot farther uh, than a Glock. It, uh, honest to God, uh, the information that we have on the outside lets us stay outside. The information about doing time, anybody can do time. Anybody can do time. It's easy. Now, if I offended you by this, have a second or third thought. Doing time's easy. Not going back is the most difficult thing for a criminal that ever existed because we think we're going to change our environment instead of our mind, our passion, our truth. So um, I, if I offended you, it's not because I don't understand. It's just because I don't want to speak that language anymore. I don't want to speak that tough guy, hard up, uh, 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 puff out my chest, throw my fist. Um, the joke in the show, Sean, is um, sometimes I, I'm, I'm not <laughs> – sometimes – it's not that I'm in serenity. It's just that I'm tired. <laughs> you know, um, the, the joke in the show I can't do in a corporate show or a kid show is uh, sometimes I want to unlock that guy's jaw. I want to take it right off his skull. You know, I still know how to throw a punch. I've been in thousands of fights, Sean. I've, I've lost 98% of them because evidently my game isn't as strong as I, as, I, as I think it is. But every fight I've ever been in, I want it to be in. I wanted to be in. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been in. The argument I win is the one I don't enter. I didn't know that shortcut when I was, you know, younger. And but right now, there's times publicly on an airplane, uh, in a, in a Safeway store, a uh, Starbucks lobby, shoot, uh, walking through the park. You know, I'll meet some asshole. Now I speak asshole fluently, but I don't want to take that guy on. Sometimes I just like to unhinge his mouth. I can see, I can see, uh, I can see breaking his jaw, but. I'm a single guy and I'm going to need that fist on Friday. I'm not letting him ruin my weekend. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's a, there's a way to do it differently. So we don't have to do same old, same old. Yeah. For the families, back to your original question, for the families, for the, for the kids. Um, uh, I, I talk to kids at least three times a month and I'm talking about tots. I'm talking about, I do a program for little kids. Um, uh, uh, we call it chances and choices, chances and choices, because the chances you take give you the choices you make. And, and uh, it's a little kind of ABC kindergarten language for kids about choices, you know, with with the feelings they have, with the thoughts they have, with the places they live. And uh, I, I didn't I didn't have that available as a kid. My parents did what my parents did. They did the best they could. It just sucked. But I don't want to suck as a parent. So I'm going to change my mind and my heart instead of my environment. You know, I could show up somewhere else and act like a different dude. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I, and I don't want my kids. I got three kids. I don't want my kids to have to change where they are. I, I'd rather have them adjust or evolve or develop who they are. Now, that sounds easy because, oh, he's outside. I'm not outside. I get it. Well, how do you think I got here? I got here by not going back there. Step one, don't go back. How do, you, how do you not go back? Talk to Sean. Talk to me. Talk to about a million other brothers out here who know how not to go back. Anybody quit? I could show you how to stay quit. You know, I remember when I was in county jails before I went to the, the prison, and if I maybe complain about the food or something, and the jail guard would say, well, don't, go, don't come to prison. And that used to make me so upset. You don't understand. Yep. I didn't put myself here. You guys locked me up. Today, 
yes, I did put myself there and I locked myself up. I get it now. I won't come to jail no more. Thank well, you. You're gonna, you're, you're gonna run a video at the end of this. You're gonna run a video of this I created. It's called Credit for Time Served. So there's jokes on there I won't repeat now. There's humor on there I won't repeat now. But I will parallel that joke process at the end of this, this recording uh, th that you're gonna do. I will parallel that with every time I ever went, I deserved it. Every time I ever went, I earned it. I earned the right not to make decisions anymore. I earned, I'm on the outside saying, I don't wanna deal with this. Well, I go to jail, I don't have to deal with it. I don't have to deal with taxes. I don't have to deal with what, geez, what am I gonna wear today? I don't have to deal with a menu. Oh, should I buy? Should I buy yellow onions or green onions to go in my omelet? <laughs> I, I, I didn't want to decide stuff on the outside. So I got to a place inside where I don't have to make decisions. I, I, don't, I, don't, have to, I don't have to file quarterly taxes. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have to make time for my kids' school meeting with this principal. I, I don't have to volunteer work anywhere. I, I, you take away the decisions. I don't want to make decisions. Guess what? I went to the perfect place where I don't have to make decisions about life. <laughs> right. they, they took all that. They took all that. Ooh, they took yeah. all that away from me. So yeah. Uh, I, I would I would tell guys who who were who were um, just getting out, you know, they they'd ask me, uh, so dude, dude, how'd you do that? I'd say, well, I did it like he did it, like he did it, like he did. There are generations of us that have been out, so you do what we do. You can be one of the guys who tell guys we do what we do, or do what you do. You know, go back and complain about the food. <laughs> you know, <laughs> wah. I got. Mm, 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 mm. I don't like chow. Really? Yeah. Okay. When you get out of here, remember how to tell the truth and show up so that you get to pick your menu item tonight for dinner. I got a fridge right now, Sean, that has steak in it. I got a fridge that's got Gatorade, ice cold. Ice cold. That I, yeah. that I get up and drink without asking anybody or looking over my shoulder. That I drink at two in the morning if I'm tired. I mean, in your on in your underwear if you want, right? Yeah, sure. Maybe maybe no underwear. Mm -hmm. But I get to decide that. I get to decide whether I'm going to put pajamas on in the morning or I'm going to put my run shoes on. Yeah. I get to decide. God damn it! Isn't that worth being out and staying uh, uh, in in a in a sane lane? Isn't that worth to be every now? If you've never been out for very long, you wouldn't know. But I promise you, I ain't lying to you today. I promise you that if you get out, want to stay out, you do what we do. You don't go back. You do what you're told instead of what you want all the time. Listen, uh, I, I I got guys all the time. This is a shortcut. Then I got to run. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, uh, but the, the 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 guys, the guys. I, I got a couple of questions that um I'll ask guys and 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 the the ladies who are locked up. Um, what do you want to do different? Because if you want to do different, I can help you. You want to do same old, same old, just talk to each other. You know, because uh, evidently right now, none of y'all knows how to stay out. Fair enough? Did I just shit on the buffet? I don't think so. None of y'all knows how to stay out yet. Yeah, but when you do, it's because you heard different information. So uh, anybody can go back. We can all go back. We all know how to go back, evidently. And then I'll, then I'll ask him this. Listen, do you, do you want to do something different? Do what you're told. And then you'll get the people who say, I'll say, how many people don't like to do what they're told? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Sorry about that. That's all right. Um, I, I, know so, got, so, I know you're going to wrap it up anyway. So. Well, <laughs> somebody, somebody's already holding me to my word that I would be available to them at a certain time. So uh, damn them for holding me accountable to what I said I was yeah. going to do. Um, so, so real quick, what, what I was going to say is, um, if, if you want to do it different, it, it, do what you do, what you're told instead of what you want. And uh, how many do, don't like to be told what to do? Almost every hand goes up. I'll go. So why did you let your criminal, your accessory before the fact, tell you what to do all day? Why did you let that substance abuser in you tell you what you let heroin tell you what to do all day? You bitch. <laughs> you let alcohol tell you what to do all day. You didn't have argue. I, I got weed telling me what to do. I got weed telling me not to show up for work, lose my job. Then I got to go steal to pay for my weed instead of earn my weed. Right? 
you, you let you let chemicals tell you what to do. You let rage tell you what to do all day. So don't tell me you don't like being told what to do. That's all you did to get that seat, to get that bunk. You did what you were told, rage. You did what you were told, pain. You did what you're told, ego. You let chemicals tell you what to do all the time. So if I say to you, now they're calling you, Sean. Now they're calling you, tell them, let Mark go. Let Mark out of that, of that soul prison you have there. Sean's penitentiary, right? Oh, um, God. Yeah. Uh, but listen, let's keep it super simple here. Um, do what you're told when you get out instead of what you want or what you like. Because what you want, what you like, and what you know got you locked up. Yeah. That's that's about as that's about as friendly uh, uh, but funny as I can say it. And without hurting any brother or mother's feelings out there, any sister's feelings, you are responsible for you. When you get out, we'll teach you, at least offer you different language so we end up different places. All right? Thank you so much, Mark. Last thing, hashtag be first. Hashtag be first. Hashtag be first. If you don't see some, be some. Patience, kindness, forgiveness, equality, trust, love, uh, heart. If you don't see some where you're at, be some where you're at. Maybe you're the first one to do it, but you will be leading instead of losing. Hashtag be first. I'll see you, brother. Thank you, Mark. I'll send you a link when I get all this done. And uh, God bless love you. you man. Keep love doing you, what man. you're doing, I, man. I, yeah, that's what I need. I need to watch more of me. <laughs> see ya. Love you. Hello and welcome. Mark Lundholm here. After 30 years of in-person visits to hundreds of jails, prisons, alternative sentencing programs, and drug courts, today I'm here to offer you more content, programming, tools, shortcuts. I've lived in a lot of places familiar to you and your clients, the people you work with, and survived a lot of dysfunctional situations prior to incarceration. This presentation is a combination of personal experience, passionate delivery, and thousands of hours spent behind bars or in a courtroom. Let me help you help them. You get great recovery tools, new communication concepts, dysfunctional family survivor skills, trauma, abuse, substance use, information, basically better ways to better days. Credit for time served. Great title, sounds wonderful. What is it you're gonna get? Well, there are two ways to experience this unique programming. First option, streamable recorded series. Available anywhere there's an internet connection. You know, connection and your connection to that hope dealer is wholehearted.org. The second option for you, credit for time served, live and in person. Mark Lundholm, let me bring it to you and yours. Where you work, where you teach, where you afford them the healing time. That's where I want to come do this live. Streamable, in person, either way you win. Now that's a bold statement, but you're looking at a guy who was a jail dweller, is now a truth teller. Let me show you how to help them do that, make that transition. How to be a changed person. Hey, oh, that might be my ride. I gotta go. Nobody in here is incorrect. You're in the perfect place at the perfect time in your perfect life as the imperfect person you are to try to be better than you've been. Humor can't help but help if you have this disease or if you come from the dysfunctional environment most of us did. Most of us were taught pain is the teacher. The lesson is your own. Go find it out. I'm just going to supply you with the pain as your parent or your guardian or your grandmama, somebody else who took the time to say, I'm in charge. You're not. I'm going to hurt you. You deal with it. Pain's easy for us. The lessons are hard. The information is difficult, at least for me. But humor helps. Ha ha is the open invitation to start to heal.